What's going on, everybody? It is the Willie Ashford from the Black Culture Podcast. I know you're ready to get into this interview, but before you do, make sure that you like and subscribe to our channel on YouTube, Apple, Google, and Spotify at the Black Culture Podcast. And also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at the Black Culture Podcast. Peace. Peace. Uh, first of all, thank you for taking the time out of your extremely busy, hectic, crazy schedule yeah, to uh, link link with us, man, because we definitely got a lot to talk about man oh yeah most definitely so but uh i don't know if you got my text uh actually i do know you got my text because i see your cup <laughs> <laughs> so you know what let's 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 just lead off with that man so we got a tradition on the podcast where before we get everything started we like to toast it up right mm-hmm. so but we like to let you choose what we gonna toast to so king king cage what we toasting to today uh, success. If that is, is just that simple, success, whatever success is to you, because everybody got different uh, definitions of success. I love it. I love it. To success. Success. To success. And, and quick one too. Uh, what's what's your name? I'm uh, just now meeting you. My name is D. Willie Ashford, man. So you want me to call you D Willie every time I talk to you? You call you D. Like you can call me. You can you can call me Will. Just call man. him Willie. Just call him Willie. Call, <laughs> call me that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, bring it show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bro, it's all good. It's all good. So look, let's go ahead, get into it. We got the young young legend King Cage on. Uh, for those who don't know, for those who may not follow UFC, tell them who King Cage Devonte Smith is. So, as you know, my name is Devontae Smith, a.k.a. King Cage. I'm a, I'm 11 and 2. I'm a lightweight in UFC. I was about to say champion because that will happen. Um, mo- I think all, I got like 10 knockouts, one submission. Uh, I'm from Cleveland, Ohio, born and raised, and obviously, you know, striving for greatness. Yeah, man. So let's talk about when you actually got into fight because, you know, I know you, I know your father. And I remember when he was, when he was talking about it, when you got into fighting, he did not want you to do that, but oh. lo and behold, you didn't, you didn't turn into a, a straight dog. So what fueled that? Like what made you want to get into fighting? Cause that's not really a typical path. Most of us growing up, we talk about sports. We want to play football, basketball, you know what I mean? But to become a UFC fighter and it's hard as hell to get into the, to the, the UFC. It is. We gonna get into that, but like, mm-hmm. what what fueled you? Like, what made you want to become a professional fighter? Um, I say cartoons, but like, it was my older brother. You know, I, I get I, I get I get that to him. We used to watch Pride. We used to watch UFC, uh, or like the street fighting. You know, uh, what was what was those stuff, stuff called? Hood fights. You know, they used to have it on the CD and stuff. We used to watch that all the time. Uh, we used to be in the basement with my dad. Uh, sparring, you know, and uh, I remember one day I was watching. Wait, you used to spar with your dad? No, my older brother. Oh, your older older brother. brother. Okay. (laughs) Hey, funny thing, funny thing for you bring that up. I wrestled my dad one time in my life. I beat him. Right. We was rolling around, and some way, somehow, I flipped him over, and I like slammed him. He was on top of me, and some way I got out, and he was like, he was salty because he was like, oh, okay, Uh, because I wasn't gonna let him get that win back. You know, I took the win, I ran with it. So I, it's, I'm one and zero, you know. Uh, well, I mean, if you wanna you wanna uh, talk about the whoopings, but I got my one. But uh, well, I was watching uh, Pride and I seen Quinn Rampage. Pick, he was in a triangle choke. He picked some dude up, slammed him, and knocked him out. And I was 14 watching this, and I don't know why it just popped up in my head. Like I can do this. Like really, like I can do this. And from there and on out, you know, because me and my older brother talked about doing it. You know, he went to, uh, what school did he go to? My Euclid, and I went to Bedford. And, you know, I started my martial art career with uh, wrestling. Really boxing, but really, like, wrestling, because I really got into, you know, that was, like, my strict discipline. And, you know, um, first day there, I told everybody I wanted to be a UFC fighter, you know, and then uh, it was, like, the second, third day of practice, you know, uh, I got my nickname, Johnny Cage. Uh, and for all the people who know me from, like, ninth grade, uh, it was Johnny Cage or Karate Johnny. Like, four years in my high school, everybody thought my name was Johnny. 
And, uh, you know, I just, as a high school, I just took it from there. All right. So, man, and I always wondered, it's like, it's a different type of up here to be like, I want to be a UFC fighter. <clears throat> and I hear them talk like in, in, in football, they like, it's a switch you got to hit before you step mm -hmm. on the field. Like, I can just imagine how big that switch is to step into a cage and it's just you and another man. It's like killed or be killed. Like, mm -hmm. so, so like, Back. man, first off, I got to ask, have you ever been kicked in the face? Yep. Yo. I, I've almost been knocked out before by that. <laughs> oh my God, man. So yeah. man, explain to me like, um, like the switch, like how you gotta, <clears throat> you gotta like, just how do you turn that on to be like, all right, I'm about to go. Cause you in the cage is you and him. Hold on, and man. Be like, before you answer that, Willie, what made you ask? Has he ever been kicked in the face? I man, just because because Bro. every time I watch UFC, I'd be like, yo, I would be mad as hell if somebody kicked me in the face, man. You know what's sort of funny about that? And, and if I can speak Frank, every all my black people who talk to me about this, that is the first thing they ask. And we don't want to be kicked in the face. Yes, they'd be like, look, let me a boxer. Like, hey man, teach me how to kick somebody in the face. Like, that's that's the only thing anybody wants to know is how to kick Bro. somebody in the face, man. What, I don't know why that is. I don't know why that is either. What's what's so funny about that, man? Most street fights, people ain't kicking you. That's no. that's that's first and foremost. But the fact <laughs> you ask about somebody being kicked in the face, that's that that's the one thing that'll get you pissed, right? Yeah, <laughs> like yo, like my like bro, like I'd rather you just punch me and knock me out than yeah. kick me in my face, man. <laughs> yeah, you see that fight last night with MVP. Uh, he kicked some dude square in the nose, and it's like it's dented in. Like this is poking out, and the top part is dented in. Whole foot to the face. Man, what to explain to me, man, like into the audience, what's the recovery stage like after like a fight like that? If you, if you get kicked in the face and your nose then in? No, like period. Like after like a fight, I don't know like how many rounds it is, but after like what's your like recovery process before you get ready for like your next fight? I say about a month. It all depends on like how the fight went, obviously, what my mindset is and where I'm at. Because, you know, yeah, I fought, but you got to remember that I did nothing but train days, weeks, months before this specific fight. You know, you can end up getting hurt during practice and still have to show up on that day. So it really depends on, like, again, you know, I, I like taking a month minimum, just not doing nothing, you know, just chilling, relaxing with the family and getting my mind and body right again. So how much time, because I was going to ask too, like, <clears throat> How much time do they give you? Like, let's say if you just signed today, you got to fight somebody. Like, do you pick, like, how much training time you get? Or does the UFC give you, like, okay, you fight in six months from now. So, like, how do you space out that training time? And, like, what are some of the steps that fighters take to to make sure they, they're getting ready for the I'm, fight? I'm, I'm, I'm hoping we don't get ahead too much because we still got, like, I definitely want us to get into his career part. I mean, we can always go back though. Like just flip we back can, forth. but I, you know, it's just that journey. You know what I'm saying? As far as where he was at, but no, I go, you, you, you can go ahead. Cause I, cause we definitely going to take a trip back to before when, yeah. when you guys were to fight. You know so saying? like you can choose in the sense of like where, like when you want to fight, you know, um, but it is, it's also that opportunity, you know, because if you're not going to fight, cool, somebody else will. And, you know, it's like, again, it's just that time and an opportunity. So when I ruptured my Achilles, I had to wait for, for a good for like a, a good bit. So sitting down, really watching, you know, opportunity after opportunity after opportunity go past me, you know, that it kind of kind of wears on your psyche. So you can choose. But, you know, if you're not fighting, where the money coming in from? You know, you got to get another job, you know, because there, there, are, there are some USC fighters that still have jobs. Um, you got to be really promoting on your, your Instagram, you know, to bring money in. Because if you're not fighting, you ain't making no money. So that, you know, it all, it all depends on what your situation is. Um, I ain't going to lie to you. What, what was the other uh, questions? <laughs> Willie. Oh no, I was just uh just pretty much that just how you like get your body prepared for fight. Okay. 
Yeah. So um, it, again, so it, again, it depends. So let's say hypothetically, I got a fight in three months. So what's that? What 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 day we in right now? Is that able? Whatever. <laughs> uh, it depends on your body type. So for me, I like to, you know, first off, get my mind right um, and take it slow. You know, if you're not in it like every single day, if you, like I said, take took a month off, you got to gradually get back into it because if you just rush back into it, your body ain't going to like that. Uh, you got to eat right. I mean, you got to eat right. Like if this is what you want to do, you like really, you got to eat right, eat clean, uh, drink plenty of water, stretch, as I was telling uh, Alex today, um, you know, me waking up in the morning, stretching. And, you know, depending on what your strengths and what, no, what your weaknesses are, you know, and who you're fighting and what their strengths and weaknesses are, you kind of base your training around that, you know? Um, and you just, every single day, you just add it, you know? You got to take recovery days is super important and stay mentally there. Yeah, man. Uh, it's definitely a, 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 a grind, right? Like for most, mm -hmm. most cats that don't know, Boxing is one thing, but being a full body fighter is a completely different animal. Mm -hmm. So let, let's go back to when you was 14, right? Mm -hmm. when you was 14 and you say, yo, I can do this. How did that journey of preparing to go here start for you? Because you've only been in for what, two, three years, right? Yeah. Yeah. So when did it actually start for you as far as this is what I'm about to commit myself to? Um, after I got out of high school, um, you know what? I tried the the college thing, but mm, I did the fighting thing at the same time. You know, I, I think I really I just had to jump in the water. I went. My first gym was um, Brick House. That was my first fighting team, and you know I was fresh out of high school, so I was still athlete ment mentally. You know, I was still like you know only thing I did was wrestle and lift weights. That's all I did. I was I was like popular but a lame at the same time. You know. Cause they knew I wrestled and I was always in the gym, but I wasn't into like parties, drinking and doing all the extra stuff, you know, no judgment. It just wasn't my thing. Um, so I, I only trained for about, we'll say six months. Cause I had to find a way to get a job. I had to find a way to pay this $60, $70 a month. Cause again, I'm just fresh out of high school. So I'm working at giant Eagle, uh, <laughs> doing whatever I can. And six months in, because of my wrestling experience and my athletic abilities, you know, I got my first fight. Um, and, you know, going through that whole day of just like that anxiety, you know, losing weight wasn't a big deal because that's all you did in wrestling. You know, you just starve yourself. Uh, but, you know, that 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 day where, you know, you because uh, as amateur, you weigh in. And then you fight the same day. As a pro, you weigh in the day before you get to rehydrate and all that cool stuff. But as amateur, you you going in there like hungry, like literally. Uh, you get like maybe like six hours of rest before you fight. And getting prepared for that, man. Like I can remember just all the nerves and just just like somebody else uh, won. Somebody else just lost. He just got knocked out. Somebody else just got submitted. And it's like back in the day where Ohio uh, fighting was like MMA, like the amateur like region, the, the 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 quality was just up there. And you just seeing your name getting closer and closer. And, you know, you got your team with you and everybody, you know, rolling you up and whatever you think and whatever gets you to turn that switch on to flip that switch. And I remember doing my crawl in the cage and I'm just like, I'm, at eight, I'm 18 years old. I see all these people. I'm walking on a mat. I'm feeling that how like how the rubber feel. And I remember them locking the gate. And I'm scared. Cause it's like, again, yeah, like Willie was saying, it's, it's you and another man. Like, ain't no talk. He, the goal is to hurt the other, your opponent to the point that the referee comes in or they can't move no more. It's kill or be killed. And I was nervous. And when that lock when that cage is locked, you always, you always remember that, how that, that sound is just like, you just hear a lot. And I just said, you know, fuck it. We here now. We might as well do what I've been trained to do. 30 seconds later, I knocked him out and it was just like a rush. Just hearing everybody scream. And it was like, 
it was like it was something that I wanted and I knew I could continue to do. And it's like, you know, I was speaking about it since I was 14. You get that knockout, you you hear in the crowd and you just remembering the days in high school, how you was just instead of doing classwork, you was on YouTube looking up UFC highlights and stuff like that, uh, watching wrestlers, UFC wrestlers so you can learn moves for uh, your wrestling meet that uh, weekend and just how the crowd was screamed. And for me to actually receive that and it actually happened, I'm like, oh yeah, we <laughs> we got to keep this going, bro. Talk 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 to me about that feeling, man. Like, <laughs> knocked them out. You won. Everybody going nuts. Like just that glory. Like, what was that feeling like for you in that moment, man? Uh, a rush, you know, because everybody talk everybody do this you know what i'm saying even if they not like fighter fighters you know they just it's just in the street everybody do this you know and it, it's really rare that somebody like a man and a man would actually like all right what's up you know and throw hands and for you to actually be that person to be to be caught cut from that you know that cloth to be able to throw your hands feet elbows knees full body contact and knock another man out it's like okay nobody tell you nothing can't nobody, can't nobody, did you just see what I did to that man? Do you want to be next? Like, can't nobody tell you nothing. And it's like, it's a, it's a good feeling. Sometimes it's a bad feeling because sometimes the way they fall, you just be in the moment, you just going. And then when you see the replay and you see how they lay in there, you're like, ooh, I went, I went a little too far. But then it's kill or be killed, you know? So after a while, you tend not to care no more. So it's, it's, it's a great feeling, you know. You trained all all this time, and you got a you got a highlight. You got a highlight. You could forever go to, forever go to. You know. So, that was your first amateur fight, right? Mm -hmm. First amateur. Now you're like, okay, I'm legit. I know I can do this. Let's get into the road to the UFC because that's a, that's a very tough road, right? Mm -hmm. That's a very tough road, and it's like, as you think, as I think about it now, growing up. Because UFC really didn't become super popular until like 10 years ago, maybe. Possibly. Right. You know what I mean? And so boxing was always a thing, especially in the black community. It's like mm -hmm. even in the street, if you throw hands, it's always a boxing match. And then they're yeah. going to try to pick you up and <laughs> slam, slam, slam you on the ground. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But UFC is a completely different thing. Like most people can't fight. Then most people can't box. Then most people definitely can't use their whole body to be mm -hmm. able to beat another fighter. So Talk to me about you went through the training, you had you, you had your first fight, then you committed to going to the ultimate fighting championship and to get in that lead. What was that role like? It was a um I'm gonna do my best to make an extremely long story short. It was a very long, and it's still the road is still going, but it was a very long and hard road. You know, I I've lost a lot of friends, you know, you, you hear people talk about this. You hear about motivational speakers. You're going to lose people and this and that when you're in school and they have, uh, I don't I go, I know, not Russell Simmons, but one of those really like big guys come to your school to motivate you. They always say that and you get it, but you don't get it until you get it. And I, I lost a lot of friends, a lot of people that I will say were, I call my brothers, uh, lot, lost a lot of you know, my, my mindset changed over time. And, you know, it's a lot of fighting, a lot of training. <laughs> I say that, but uh, let's see. When I went pro, I went to, ironically, when I went pro, I was with the gym that my first opponent went to. So that's kind of weird. He was gone. He was done with fighting after that. But, you know, I had to switch. I had to switch gyms because my first coach, he ain't believe in me. I remember he telling me that my former teammates were just better than me and he told me that only thing I tried to do was kill people that's what he told me that's the first that's what he told me and I was like ah oh, dang all right cool like like he did not but so it's funny you know I can't wait to see him again um then I went to Evolve that was my next gym and it was it was a great gym you know I, that's when I learned you know family and all that cool stuff and bonded with a lot of people but then when I turned pro and managers and stuff started getting involved and, you know, people started seeing me because I'm number one in Ohio now, my coach, he, he starts showing, you know what I'm saying? He starts showing like that dark side, you know, when they try to like, he tried to get me in a, a, a contract 
it ain't, it ain't, it didn't seem right, you know, uh, how everything went down. And when I actually read the contract, it was like, hmm, you ain't really for me, you know, because the things that's in here, this doesn't make sense, you know, like at all. You don't, you don't need to go to law school to understand this don't make sense. So um, I had, you know, I had to leave that, you know, and that was my first gym that I seen as a family where I felt like I was connected. So that was very hard to leave everybody. You know, I had to leave everybody. And for about a year, I was by myself, you know, finding different gyms, traveling uh, to different places, whether I'm driving. I mean, I used to drive three hours. Like I used to work a, constru a construction job and where I did, I uh, delivered uh, nails, drywall, steel, uh, mud, ceiling tile, uh, ceiling tile, uh, whether it was boiling hot. I remember one of my coworkers on had his heat stroke, whether it's frigid cold in the, in the, in the ground is just nothing but ice. You still got to move metal. That's like 20 footers. And you using the, the little, uh, the, uh, what's the, not the, 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 not the, I don't want to say chimney, the, uh, dollies, but they only help so much on like icy ground. And after that, I'd be working eight, 10 hour shifts. And right after that, I would drive two, three hours to Pittsburgh, sometimes every day. And I wouldn't get home. Uh, I wouldn't get home to like one o'clock in the morning, sometimes two, and have to be up at five. So I only had three hours of sleep. And I would do that so, like, so, so, so much because I had to stay focused on, you know, what I seen, you know, no matter where, what everybody else was doing no matter how everybody else was feeling. Cause I did feel left out in a couple of things, but it's like, I had to do what I had to do to get where I wanted to get. And that's was to the UFC. And I got connected to uh, my manager now, Jason. And he was, he was, he was, he was like trying to get after me for about a year, but just, I had really bad experience with managers, you know, and how they, they say they they your they your friend. They say they cool with you. They say they gonna help you. But I say this, you know, to give any advice, if 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 you working with somebody at the end of the day, first off, your manager works for you. And I say that respectfully, you know, not don't treat them like you know dirt. But you know, they get you, they twist your mind and make you think you work for them. That's not how it goes. I don't care if they have uh, a Muhammad Ali on the uh on the roster they work for you and and like i said they, they, they'll, they'll get your mind twisted so a lot of them got me or two of them got me that way where you know i'm doing more than i'm supposed to i'm supposed to be training i'm supposed to be focused on you know training you eating staying healthy when it comes to promoting and going out to get things for me not saying that i can't help but that's your job you feel me and when I'm doing your job while also doing my job, what do I need you for, you know? And so Jason, he was coming after me for about a year. Uh, he'll call me at random times, like, you're checking up, you're checking up on me, seeing how I've been, this and that and that and this. And I remember two fights, my last two fights before the UFC. Like I said, I'm knocking everybody out. I'm number one in Ohio. Got to the point where nobody wanted to fight me out here that Ohio or the, the Ohio League, whatever, they sent me out to uh, no to uh, Memphis to fight their number one guy because uh, he was, I guess, he was good. So my license was suspended. <laughs> so my mom, it was me, my mom, and uh, my little brother, my uh, my little sister, and my baby brother, just all smushed. And the Honda driving uh eight, nine hours. As soon as we got on the freeway, we got pulled over. Police was looking for me. And it was like they looked in there, it was like uh as Devontae Smith. I'm like, yeah, I'm the passenger. He was like, Oh, all right, cool. So he let us go. Um, uh, and going out to Memphis, man, it was it was a whole different other experience with ah, these different promotions and how they set you up. And uh, but that's neither here nor there. That's a different story because that was wild. But just dealing with dealing with all of that, and then knocking knocking them out. Like me, I, me showing up there, I seen how they didn't care. Uh, I ain't gonna say they didn't care, but they they thought they man was gonna win. You know, he thought he was gonna win. Came in with the suit, the camera crew, and we both looking at the belts. 
Hey, he, I don't know what his mindset was, but my mindset was, I'm going back home with both of these. You know what I'm saying? It's this mine and it's my mom's. You feel me? And uh, shoot, I remember watching the uh, watching the replay of the fight. It was calling me King Kang. Who was King, who was King Kang? I don't know who that is. And I knocked him out in the fourth round. And even though I knocked him out in the fourth round, they still, in a lot of ways, didn't give me my credit. In, in sense of like, they was asking me, oh, how tight was that one submission hole? Why does it matter? He was asleep. You know what I'm saying? Well, why does it matter what submission hole he had me in? But I came back home with the two belts. I still wasn't getting no calls, nothing. You know, and I had the manager that I had. And I was the one who, in, in a lot of ways, got that fight for myself. So again, if I'm doing my job and your job, what we doing? What would I need you for? So then I got another fight. This time I'm fighting in Columbus against a UFC veteran. And uh, I knock him out first round. Uh, shoot. I don't know how many minutes it was in, but it wasn't like, it was probably like two minutes in, knocked him out. And I was making no money. Understanding this, when you're an amateur, and, you, and even when you're going pro, you're not making no money. So, you know, these dreams and aspirations, if you're not one of those people who can promote themselves in a very, like, pretty much boisterous way, you know, make everything look good, you ain't making no money off these fights until you in the major leagues. And I, for me to fight a UFC veteran, I only was making four and four, which was $400 to show up and $400 to win. Only way they would give me five and five, which was a thousand dollars, was if I knocked him out. So they would say that was a uh, it was a bonus. So if I did knock him out, I was walking away with eight hundred dollars. You know, and let's not let's not forget the people you got to pay. So I'm talking to my manager like, "What's up? What's up?" And there's all all these games, all this you know, beating around the bush. And Jason, man, he hit me up like, "Hey, you know, woo woo woo." You know, just give me the, I'm not saying we, uh, I'm a, he said he, he's not saying it's not going to be a, a, a journey, but he going to do his best. And I was like, ah, right. he said, just give me the ball, man. And I gave him the ball, like whatever, man. And first thing he did was got me on the uh, UFC contender series, you know, and that was like the beginning of everything, uh, you know, just the getting into the UFC and, where I'm at now. Man, so it seemed like it seemed like things were much more simple before like managers and promoters and stuff got involved. Mm. Like how much does how much did the business change? Like, cause you hear a lot of people in like sports say, you know, sometimes the business side takes the fun out of it. So mm. how much different was it? before you really had to learn the business and get into like having a manager and learning about promotions, was it just much more simpler? I know that's part of the mm. sport. You need that. Mm. But like, how was it? Like, did it take a toll on your mental? Cause like you said, you trying to do your job to perform, but also you trying to do your damn manager's job at the same mm. time. Mm. Um, like you, you need, I'm not gonna say you do need them in, in a, in a, in a sense. Um, because especially if you have a good one, you know, somebody who really like Jason, man, he's, he's been great, you know, and we've been working together for like three, maybe, yeah, about three years now. He, he's a great guy, but you do need it. it it's, it's sad to say, but at the end of the day, it's entertainment. Only, only people that it's serious to, to a certain extent is the fighters. Cause we're out there literally like fighting for our lives. Even though this is what we choose, but we're fighting for our lives for other people's entertainment. So if again, if you're not one of those people who know how to blow themselves up, you need to have a team, you need to have a team around you. You know, a team can, you know, team like, you know, team that's gonna help promote, a team that's gonna help market, you know, a team that see that's I sound cliche, but it's what it, it's what it is. A team that has the same vision as you. You feel what I'm saying? So um, you 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 need them. It's 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 a good it's a good balance, you know. Because before I got them, I wasn't as good as you know posting stuff here and there. Uh, so I had to do so much. So at times it takes you having to do so much takes 
away from the focus from fighting and staying focused on training and staying, you know, recovery and all these cool things. And that's why you need that team. So you ain't got to, oh, let me go post this. Oh, I got to do this. I got to do that. Your team, you know, whoever is delegated to do that, that thing handles that. And the only thing you do for the most part is check up on them, make sure everything's running well and just stay focused what you need to be focused on. Now, let's talk about pay, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we actually interviewed a dude who has a sports podcast last night, and we was talking about, you know, should college af athletes be paid? We talk about amateur fighting, right? And mm. in boxing, UFC, I think UFC is bigger than boxing right now, which is why they got mm. these little, you know, st st stunt fights with Floyd and Jake Paul, you know what I'm saying? These little stuff could kind of bring – attention back back to boxing because you ain't got the heavyweights that you used to have like tyson and mm -hmm. ali and you know all these dudes when and when floyd left it kind of really just got boring you know what i'm saying that's why they was trying to make all them super fights but ufc man you said you really don't get paid when it comes to amateurs but mm -hmm. even when you do get into ufc dana white controls everything y'all don't have the level of promotion that if you were like a top top-notch boxer mm -hmm. you would have what are some of the things that you see as far as fighters getting paid where you think like, man, maybe they should get more things that could possibly be done so fighters could get more? Like you said, you out there risking your life. Mm. Um, you know, this, this, this topic has come more and more like, you know, in your face or in my face since, you know, uh, the Floyd thing and everybody looking at pay and Jake Paul talking about, you know, like you said, Dana White controls everything. Um, and I'm going to just be, you know, for me, I I get it. I get it that, you know, we should get paid a lot more because we use in our whole bodies. Like, what's old boy named Frankie Edgar just fought um, Corey Sanhagen on my card February 6th. And he threw a flying knee. Stiff. My man, Frankie Edgar was stiff. Like, when he hit the ground, he was just, like, his body didn't, like, relax. He was stiff. And, you know, to not even, to go through that, you would think you get paid a lot more. And I, I really don't know what uh, uh, people can do. I mean, you could think about, you know, I guess creating a union, because isn't that what, like, the basketball players did and the uh, boxers? But uh, I feel like people are just scared or afraid of you know losing their job or getting crossed out and stuff like that but when you look at it now and sorry if i'm going off script for a bit uh all these other it's, it's no, so many, no, bro go ahead go ahead yeah all these different uh there's different uh organizations uh fighting organizations so it's like ufc is not so much holding it as a monopoly you know like pfl you you got to fight two times, but I have a teammate who won second place and uh, he won 500,000. And uh, the dude that beat him was another, uh, he had a teammate. He was call him an acquaintance. He a cool dude. He was one to beat him. He won a million dollars. And you look at, you know, not talking that, you know, now you never not, not say that because I'm, <laughs> but you know, there's many different like Bellator. They're, they starting to come up in popularity. You know, UFC always holds that you know, because it's you, it's like, you know, it has history. But one FC over there in China, they picking up. They have a lot of good fighters. So because it's being talked about so much more, I feel like it's it's, it's gonna happen, you know, because it's 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 gradually becoming a like not gradually, it's always been, but more people are speaking out about it. You know, even boxers are speaking out about it, like, you know, I know we hit hard, but Y'all be kicking people in the face. I don't even know that's, that's, that's yeah, that's, man. It's, it's, it's like because, and, and I'm not even talking about just the brutality of sport. I'm talking about the amount that's coming in because mm -hmm. UFC ads. You've seen them every single day, and they fight all the time. And yeah. so I'm looking at revenue. I'm looking yeah. at like when it comes to fighters, like like you and I talked. We talked about Conor McGregor. If yeah. it wasn't for that Floyd fight, he would have never got that that bag. That's right. I don't know that. Yeah, it's like Floyd is the one who like and and you as a fighter, when you see somebody like a Jake Paul or a, a Nate Robinson, who, you know, can't fight and, you know, it's all antics, but they walking away with millions of dollars for fighting 
what what do they fight eight 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 nine rounds or something like that yeah. right and it's a exhibition match and you didn't put your heart and soul into it for the past 10 15 years it's like how does that make you feel when you're seeing these dudes walk away with those bags and they really can't fight like you know if they got in the in the cage with you their whole life is over <laughs> you know yeah. what i'm saying yeah. it, but it, but you not getting your just do as, as far as pay like you should and you know the money's coming in okay i'm i don't think i'm weird this is just the way i think i i um i respect them on the sense of the hustle right i uh, i focus so much on myself in, on, in a humbly way that humble way that is like Mm, I just I don't think I could do is really right now respect them and just look how they doing it, you know. Watch them, and, you know, because the only thing I'm gonna do is just complain about it. Ain't nothing gonna you know change. I ain't gonna say nothing gonna change, but the only thing I'm gonna do is complain about it. So I uh, I just I just watch them, you know. It is it is disrespectful that you know um, I get Floyd, but it's like all these people that's been trying to. And I, and I, I'm a big a huge Floyd uh, Mayweather fan. But for all these, these professional boxers and all these people that have been wanting to fight you, you know what I'm saying, and you give it up to this, I know you know you can beat them. I know you, you know, you got to... It's the not, bag. It's the bag. It's, it's the bag. Yeah. And, yeah, I, and that's I, all I, it is. That's your hustle, you know? But it's just, it's just, uh, it's just the pride, you know what I'm saying? You know, it's just the pride of a fighter, you know, the, the glory of the win, you know, the to, to say, I beat this dude, this dude. You know the money gonna come right now is, and I respect it because it's a business, and he they getting, especially for he getting what you know you're supposed to be wanting to get. You know if you putting your brain and your physical being in in danger, you want to get the bag. But I, I so it's like it's a back and forth because I understand the business side, but then that 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 fighter in me is kind of like, mm. so I, I just let me just focus on myself. So what did they do to get that? Okay, all right, let me see if I can, you know. So 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 I'm glad we on this topic because I was talking to um a former boxer last night and I want to get your take on it. First off, my first question is, is there not cheating, but is there like side deals involved in boxing? Because my thing with this Floyd thing is, first off, man. I think, and I heard Jake Paul say this, his thing is people doubt him. So he going to the ring and somebody doubt him, boom, I got him. Now, Floyd got a reputation. If you banking on Floyd going in there doubting you, I don't think Floyd going to risk his record to lose you. But what I do think is, and this is just me, I could be wrong. This is just my, you know what I'm saying, my conspiracy. I think it's a deal on the side like, hey, yo, let it go a little distance and then, you're going to win, but don't knock him out quick or something. Because I really think Floyd's just going there and knock Logan Paul out. Like, mm -hmm. And I do understand why some of the boxers are upset. Because think about it. You just said it. Like, guys wait a long time and years for a payday. And here come this dude from YouTube. He coming in. And he automatically, like, mm -hmm. getting these fights. So I do understand where the hate from the boxers come yeah. in at. Because he's like, how's this guy passing me up? Mm -hmm. Um, I don't <clears throat> Anybody can get it, man. That's why I think it's risky, you know, because isn't Logan Paul bigger than him? I don't, it's like, you know, I guess, yes, yeah, size size matters when the person know what they doing. You know, yes, Floyd, you're, you're a great defensive fighter. You're, you're a great boxer. The You know, obviously you you, you uh, got that big zero right there. So you're the greatest boxer ever, you know. Um, but anybody can get caught. Anybody can have an off day. Anybody can, you know, it's, it's just stupid stuff happen. Uh, you know, uh, that, that side bend stuff is, is, is just, in my eyes, is goofy. You know, like you said, he has a reputation and he got a big O. You know, let's say he slipped and he got caught, you know, and now your record, your reputation is just tarnished, you know. And it's, it's I don't know. It's like, I want to watch it, but it's... Mm. So there are side bets. That's why I was asking. Oh no, I don't. I don't know if there's side bets. I don't. No, think, no. I'm just saying. Period. Like, has it ever been so like? Let, so let's say you about to fight somebody, right? Okay. Has it ever been a like? Listen, man. Listen, King. We know you're gonna win. All right. Uh, but listen, get at least let him get out the first round. Like it's stuff like that in in fights. It's Floyd. It's probably. It's Floyd. okay. It's, it's pro probably. It's it's Floyd. It's Floyd. All right. Okay. I mean, That's I mean, all I, I wanted to know. I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't take the these little 
exhibition matches seriously. I mean, I, I don't because it's, it's not meant to be a real fight. It's meant to just be a bag, right? Mm -hmm. So um, let me ask you this, though. When you see Floyd getting all these white fighters these bags or these white wannabes these bags, mm -hmm. and like you said, you know that it's professional fighters that look like us, mm -hmm. that if they got a chance to fight Floyd, they would get a bag too. Outside of just being a fighter, how does that make you feel? Um, uh, truthfully, I don't know. Uh, uh, I don't, I, I don't know. I wouldn't say. <laughs> no, man, it's cool. You go ahead, man. Say it. <laughs> uh, conflicted, I get. Well, not really. It's like it's always a money. It's always a money thing with him, you know. And I don't know him personally, so from what I see, you know, from what he shows, it, it's always a money thing, and. You know, I can't focus too much on what he does. You know, I can only focus so much on what I can do. So, you know, that's that's one thing I do want to do in, in the future, whether it's near or later. I do want to help, you know, the people in Cleveland, you know, grow, you know, get get people opportunities, you know, that they wouldn't have if I wasn't here or if I wasn't to help or if I, if I wasn't here to give some direction, you know, because shoot, like you said, we need help too, you know? <laughs> so, and yeah, just, you know, help my people out, out in Cleveland, you know? Uh, and, and, but in that, like I said, that's, so, that's the best I can do because me watching him doing whatever he doing and I'm not doing nothing. It's, you know, nothing's getting done, but talk. Now, I don't know how many UFC fighters there actually are in Cleveland, but only two, of them. only two. That's crazy, bro. That's that's crazy. Wow, I I didn't know that. Are y'all yeah. are y'all uh, friends or? Uh, yeah, we cool. His, his name is Alexa. <laughs> he 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 cool. He cool. He real like real cool dude. Um, uh, I remember when he first started. Uh, so it's cool to see that he uh. He in the UFC now. It was it was uh, what's her boy name? Stepe, then Jessica I, then me, and now uh, Alexa. Okay, okay. So you eleven and two, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I don't know if you got another fight on the books that you getting ready right. for at the moment, but what does the future look like for you in your career? Like how, how are you trying to shape your path? Cause I know that you didn't just come to fight. You also came to get that bag to mm. be a legend too. You know mm. what I mean? Mm. Greatness, you know, just, just greatness. Um, Cause it, it's a, it's a, like I said, the journey's still going. So I'm, I'm still learning. Uh, I'm reading as much as I can. So my mindset is constantly changing. You know, I could want one thing, one moment, you know, have an epiphany and a deeper understanding about something than want something else to a certain extent. But uh, just greatness, man. You know, um, leaving leaving a, a legacy, you know, and I know that's what a lot of people want, but to actually obtain it, you know, um, to, to, to have generational wealth, you know. I want the bag, but I'm going to get the bag regardless. You know what I'm saying? Like, whether I'm fighting, whether I'm doing something, I'm going to always get the bag. And I've been broke before. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It ain't that bad. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? People, you know, I'm not saying you want to strive to be broke, but I'm not, I, I, the money can stress you out. You know, when you feel like you don't have enough, it can give you, it can bring anxiety. You know, it, it could do, it could do a lot more negative than good. So as long as I stay focused on what I need to be focused on, the money going to come. You know what I'm saying? Whether in small portions, medium portions, or large portions, you know, he's just, like I said, I just can't be too focused on what everybody else doing if it ain't like helping my my story, you know. But yeah, greatness, man, greatness, greatness in all ways, man, in all in all ways, and to be greater than either, uh, every next day. Man, it's it's funny you say that because you know we've seen in our lives when, especially now when they throwing out crazy money if you're in an mm -hmm. nba you want a nfl mlb whatever but usually when an athlete they get that contract or that big bag they're not as great as they once were because now they got the money it's like okay i fought and fought and fought 
to get to this point. And now that I'm here, I don't feel like I have to do nothing else. Right. Right. Let me ask you this. Looking back on your career thus far, if you could, would there have been anything you would have done different? Um, yeah, no, because I've done them. It's just, I should have did them sooner. And that is letting those people, certain people go, whoever they were, um, because it, it, it does wear on you you know, whatever type of relationship it is. Um, and it took a while for me to see, but once I let those people go and really uh, went, uh, started my journey on focusing on me, focusing on what I need to do, focusing on, you know, taking care of my family, like the things that are like truly important to me, things just start coming to me. Like, I'm not saying falling in my lap, but I was so prepared for the opportunities you know, just being focused, that it felt like everything was just falling in my lap, you know? So that's that's about it. Maybe let those th- things go sooner. But, I mean, I, I've done it. And, you know, when those situations arise again, just with a different person, I just cut them off so- sooner, you know? <laughs> nah, I've seen this already, bro. I'm cool. Go about your day, <laughs> you know? So, like, now, like, I remember when I was in uh, high school, uh, I went to Kennedy and it was a wrestling coach called Shabazz. I used to always walk past the uh the little gym thing and they'd be wrestling. I never did it. And immediately after I graduated high school, I was like, man, I should have wrestled. Do you think, because I don't know how popular it is. I know for sure the kids want to play basketball. They want to play football. And you may have a few kids uh, play baseball. Do you feel like more kids now should get into wrestling? Listen, man, listen, man. <laughs> Yes. Wrestling, depending on who the coach is, because my coach was, he was cool, but he was an a-hole. But just let's scratch that off. Wrestling is the hardest thing I've, I've ever done in my life. Like, like this fighting stuff, I'm not saying it's easy, but I did all the crazy things you would do, you know, but I just did it as a, as a child. So it, it helped my mentality, you know, because I wanted to win. So because I wanted to win, I was always in the gym. I'm always working on technique. I'm always this and that. It's very, it's very disciplined. You get strong. I was just about to say, like, it must, I just imagine the discipline it teach you. Yes, yes. And it's like, you get to, you get to release that aggression. You don't know how many times in school somebody say something. And I just like, kind of just look at them and then like talk to myself, like, man, just wait, just save it. Just save it to after, you know what I'm saying? Just save it to after school. You get to wrestle. You know, I'm going to use this for the meet this Saturday. And, you know, that's why I said people knew me as a wrestler. So sometimes it got to the point where some people say something. They're like, hey, you better chill before Johnny put you in that WWE move and slam you on the head. So sometimes I ain't got to say nothing. But, you know, and it, it's, it's a, it, it shows you a lot. It shows you a lot about yourself, your, your character, because you wrestling, you know, going from the point, point of view of, uh, of a man, you know, you wrestled a, a whole nother man and you like not breaking because that's sh- six minutes tiring for t- six minutes feel like an hour. It's two minutes, it's three rounds, two uh, two minutes each. It's go, 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 go. It's consistent like movement. If you back away too much and you're not engaging, stalling on red or stalling on green, you're going against some kid that father wanted to be a state champion wrestler and didn't succeed so he put all that pressure on his son and his son put all that pressure on you and you not breaking I've had those those wrestling meets where I went against a really good guy and I had to find some way some way some ways uh some shapes for him to win and to 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 work so hard and get the win and just the you know bask in just the glory you know, I know everybody not warrior mentality, you know, but like, you know, it was boxing, you know, not everybody can do boxing and then try to wrestle it, you know, because it's, it's many types of wrestling. You got Greco style wrestling, you got folk style wrestling and you got freestyle wrestling. And um, I did folk style and freestyle. I wanted to do Greco, but I wasn't able to. And But hey, I'm in the UFC. So I have a, a six-year-old. He'll be seven next month. And he really, really, really wants to wrestle. 
First mm-hmm. off, what is the proper age that you think that's mature enough for a kid to start wrestling? And also, because I know my wife going to watch this, what's some mm-hmm. advice you would give to parents that are nervous for their <laughs> kids to get into wrestling? Okay. Um, I wouldn't say any age, but um, he, he sounds like he, like, does he want to wrestle because of wrestle wrestling or he want to wrestle because WWE? WWE, he always wrestling. He just, dad, I want to wrestle. Dad, I want to okay. wrestling team. Okay. That's going to be the first realization that this ain't WWE and there are no turnbuckles. So he going to have to get used to, to that part. But um, any age, uh, really, is just well, the uh, how good the coach is. Because I, I teach kids here and there how to box, and it's hard to keep their attention. It's, it's hard to keep their attention. So it depends. I say it depends on the coach, the, the system that they got going, the program that they got going, going on. But as long and, and as long as you know it's gonna be a hard sport, and you know he grows to understand it's gonna be a hard sport, and to never give up, because you're gonna have a lot of days where another kid is holding you down, and there's nothing you could do at that moment because you don't have the knowledge. So, to the parents that are nervous, you, it's, you're just gonna have to get used to it you know because it's a for the for the father i don't know the father's getting nervous you know uh i think my dad got nervous too at times when he came to some of my meets but it's it's a physical sport you know i i know those fears of what if he breaks this what if he gets slammed on his head it's a possibility but they'll be all right He'll be all right. <laughs> it's a possibility. <laughs> yeah, but he'll be, he'll be all right, man. I've, I've seen that it all. broke everything, but he'd be good. Yeah, he'd be yeah. good, you know. Just know it, it builds. It sounds crazy, but think about it. It builds character. You know, you watch the fighters. You If you meet any MMA fighter, any wrestler, any, like, like real good athlete, they always say that they're the most nicest people, the most calmest people, the most down-to-earth people. You know, because it, it's like once you get to a certain point where you know you can beat somebody up and you know you can do certain things, you don't really look for it because it's like, eh, you know, and being able to get slammed in your head and keep going. Oh, you're going to make it in life. You go, you go, you got to. You got slammed in your head. You can't move it. You're going to make it. Hey, man, it's funny you say that because honestly, I feel like more young men should get into contact sports like that. Mm -hmm. Um, because especially when you got them being raised by single mothers, Mm -hmm. right? That's, that's a big thing. Like, you know, I, I didn't start fighting until I got older, but you know, I, I boxed a little bit back, back in the day or whatnot, but it was always having older cousins and playing football and whatnot that help. And I I did have both, both of my parents at home, but you got a lot of young men who they don't get that sort of contact. So they, Mm -hmm. nowadays they playing video games esports mm-hmm. right <laughs> you know what i'm saying yeah. so but look as an athlete what are other sports that you think because you know this 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 is the black culture podcast so we t- we talk yep. about everything as it as it pertains to black culture yeah, yeah normally with us it's either football basketball boxing but man you got golf you got tennis you got olympics which that that was another question i want to ask you is mma in olympics is it in the olympics yeah uh, I know I, boxing is. It's not, but I feel like it's going to be one day. I feel like it's going to be because it's, it's too popular, you know. So um, one day it's uh, one day is going to be, but right now it's not. Okay, but yeah, like what are other sports that you feel like our young men should be able to get into, or that they should get into outside of just football, basketball, and boxing? Okay, I was I was about to say that we need to in some ways get back into boxing. Cause I feel like nobody really box. Everybody just talk about shooting. And it's becoming a lost art, man. You yeah, right? yeah, that's true. That's true. It is really, you know, and and that's that's frustrating. That is like, you know, because if everybody knew how to throw hands, it's kind of it's kind of like when they talk about well, if everybody got a gun, ain't nobody gonna use it in a sense. You know what I'm saying? You know, because if you go inside of a store and everybody got a gun, you're like, man, maybe I shouldn't rob this place. You know what I'm saying? Same thing. If everybody know how to fight, you know, you kind of kind of chill and you're like yeah, I really don't feel like going through that that's how I see it but um wrestling uh jujitsu I just put my uh baby brother and my niece in jujitsu um that's another art it's more it's the opposite of wrestling 
So it's delicate, but it's not because you're learning how to choke people out and break bones. But it's love it. It's, love it. Yeah, it's you call less, that delicate, right? Because it's more control. Wrestling <laughs> is it's like, delicate, but you learn how to break bones. Yeah, and you gotta choke about people it. out. Yeah, like it, with wrestling, it's constant. This it's constant clash, and that's that's why you know you get the strength. But what you get to once you learn how to manipulate people's body weight, you learn how to sweep them over. You learn how to put your weight down to keep them held in place. And yes, you do learn how to break arms and you know throw people out. But most of the time, you don't really want to break somebody. If 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 we got into an altercation, right, and I get you down the ground and I just put you in the arm bar, didn't like really like yank on it, but I have your I have your arm. Are you going to keep trying to fight me or are you going to chill out? If I say chill out. You're going you're to you're stop. Of course you're yeah. going to stop. Right. You're gonna stop. But wrestling, you know what I'm saying? If a physical altercation, you know, I pick you up in the air. Now you're about to fight planet Earth. You get what I'm saying? It's just straight on. It ain't no stopping. Uh, but jujitsu, you could, you could like, you know, like you said, you'll chill out. So what's another sport? Jujitsu, me, kickboxing. You know, that's another thing. Everybody like to kick, you know, <laughs> kickboxer. Uh, but you got to have a good teacher. That's one thing I have noticed about around this area. You got to really, like, some of these kickboxers really don't be knowing what they're like. They know what they're doing basics-wise, but in a real fight, they don't really know how to do things. They just know how to beat up on their client, like, the, the, the people. Like, they, if you get what I'm saying... Like they could show you a move and it looks really cool because you don't know what you're doing. Bro, I hate that. So it's like after training, man, movies got so boring to me because you can yes. just see <laughs> yes. all of the fakeness involved. And it's like, yeah, it looks good because y'all practice that and that's the exact move that you're supposed to mm -hmm. do at that time. Or mm -hmm. if you see a video on Instagram or YouTube or something and a dude is just standing there and they're doing a the move. Yep. Yeah, it, it, it looks great right there. But yeah. not, in a real fight, no, nobody's just going to stand there and Nobody. just let you punch him in the face. <laughs> like, yeah, that's exactly. not going to happen. Exactly. So you got to really know what you're looking for when you're looking for like a Muay Thai kickboxing jump. But uh, I, I feel like we're getting, I don't really know because I'm more so into fighting sports. But I, I feel like football and basketball. Football was not my thing. Football and basketball is what we like to do because that's the only thing that's promoted, you know. And like they say, everybody want to be a basketball player, but how many spots do they have open again on the team, you know? And I, they say that, you know, but people don't really think about that. You know, well, everybody think, well, you know what? I'm going to be the one that, you know, is going to have that spot, which is, okay, cool, good way of thinking. But it just comes a time and a place where you just like, you just know this ain't you, you know? And then, you know, but they want the girls, the money, the cars, and so they're blinded. But football, I, I even in high school, I did not understand the, the, the mathematical problem of a 100-pound man running into a 200 pound man and everybody used to be like oh you being scary this and that that's so what? funny coming from a ufc fighter like honestly man <laughs> like bro like y'all kick people in the face for a living and punch like yeah. like so to hear a ufc fighter say they don't understand football it's like really what you yeah, don't understand cool. it no nah, i'm cool i play uh i play uh was it was it flag oh no it wasn't flag it was like Full contact. It was like after high school, they convinced me to come out and play, you know, football with them, right? So I'm like, all right, cool, whatever. But I'm telling them, like, I'm not really about to try for real because I'm not about to get hurt because this don't count for nothing. And when I got there, man, dudes was huge. Like, what, what you think I'm about to do with you? Like, I'm not getting paid for this. Like, this is goofy. And one dude, he was, he was, he was smoking a blunt, man, and I was just watching him. And I was just like, man, he about to think this is a real game. And he got the ball and he was straight lined it towards me. No lie. I stepped to the side. I, I, I let him get that touchdown. You and they took a mad. business decision. <laughs> they was mad at me. I'm like, bro, do you see how he was trucking at me? What sense did that make for me? No, y'all have fun with that. 
one skinny dude was like, I ran after him, but did you get him down? No. <laughs> all right, all right, there. Man, that's so funny hearing that from a UFC fighter, man. Like, I listen, man, when old boy broke his shin, when he went shin to shin, listen, I was like, see, that's exactly right right there. Like, yeah. you signed up for this. Like, no. Yeah. Like, and you yeah. think that's football is worse than that? Oh, we, man. We all have dangers, you know. Uh, okay. Okay. I can give you a different outlook on that. And, and this is not speaking down on Chris, Chris Weidman. But this is just the truth, and everybody says it. So we can compare it to football. If somebody makes the wrong move and gets hurt, you feel bad for them, but you kind of break it down the, the technique and be like, well, why would you do that? You get what I'm saying? Like, that doesn't make sense. And, you know, I went to get a, a teammate of mine uh, uh, named Chris Gutierrez. We call him Critiquez out in Colorado. Amazing kicker. I mean, amazing. He is, I believe he's the seventh or eighth person uh, in UFC history that had a fight stop because the dude couldn't walk no more. Like he was whooping his legs, whooping his legs. I mean, like only thing you heard was whoosh, whoosh, the dude switch stance and that new leg that he put in, in the front was getting whooped as well, whooping his legs. He a 135er, but he kicks so hard. But when he shows me stuff, he was like, "You never, your first kick should never be hard. You got to set it up. You know, you got to like tap, see their reactions and, you know, go from there. What Chris Wadman did, he just stepped in and like perfect technique and everything and put nothing but power behind that. There was no setting nothing up in any way, shape or form. You see it because Uriah Hall, only thing he did was put it, he just tilted his leg out just a little bit to check it. Yeah, he moved back a little bit, but it was that was shin on shin and what happened with Chris Weidman I feel like all the pressure came wherever he made contact with went all the way down traveled down to his ankle and snapped it you got it you got I'm not saying it wouldn't happen if you set it up but you have a, a, a greater possibility of landing the kick properly and and the guy not checking it than just ah, I'm gonna kick now you know and because he didn't even lift his foot up. He just turned his leg out just a little bit. And then he stepped back on it because I don't think he realized he had broke it. Like, he stepped back, and then I think he took, like, a step, and then he realized it, and it was like, ah, oh, bro. I feel like he knew it. I feel like he just didn't know what happened. I feel like okay. it was just, yeah, like, when it when it broke, some, something. Because when I hurt when I hurt my hand, something shoots in your brain, like something made So right. even with all the adrenaline, you still knew you broke your hand? Yes. Okay. Yeah. You just got to keep fighting. And the crazy thing is, when the dude grabbed me, I started hitting him with the hand. <laughs> that was messed up. <laughs> oh, but, yeah. You 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 don't you don't ever stop. <laughs> nope. <Got it. laughs> Unless the referee I, stop it. That's, and sometimes, my one fight, I hit the referee. He got in the way. <laughs> he got in the way. Hey, man, that's funny because most people don't know how many of them refs get, get their nose broke when they, mm. when they, they try and step in the middle of the fight. It happened a lot in boxing. Like, really? the dudes get their, oh, yeah. Yeah, them refs be getting their nose broke because you got to think you can watch this the uh, slow motion and it looks like it's going really slow. But when you throw on a punch and the dude's face is right there, you mm-hmm. ain't you ain't doing it on purpose. But it's just the fact that he just got away because he's trying to stop the fight. But you you don't already threw that punch and it just landed perfectly. Unfortunately, mm, they just be like stiff with their hands, their you know, eyes closed, bro. bro. Hey, yo, so I want to ask you this right now: Who is your favorite fighter? Other than you. Okay, I wasn't going to say that, but thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, it's not a hard one because it's, it's a lot. It, are they active or just overall? Oh, that's a good question. All right, so I'm going to say this. Give me your top three right now and then top three overall. I like John Jones. Dog. Uh, there's a lot of USC fight, okay. Uh, if we just if we just talking MMA, um, Demetrius Johnson, Mighty Mouse, he getting work over there in uh in one FC, but he's he's still holding his own. Uh, what's another one? I respect Khabib. No, not a favorite fighter, but I respect him. Uh, damn, who else did I I just think is like. 
Huh. Man, I I I don't I don't know on the MMA side. All right, then here I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna ask you this: What you think about Israel Adesanya? Uh, he's he's good. He he fights. He get hit a lot. In my opinion, he just get he, he just his his fight with Paula Costa was very good. His fight with Yoel Romero, he was thinking smart. And people was mad that he wouldn't engage. But I'm like, why the fuck would he? Do you not see? I've met Yoel. This man has like he turns to you like this. He's sick, sick. He, you know, they be like, "I love you." He like he talks like that for real. Uh, uh, he just gets hit too much. He's he's really good and very technical. He just sometimes it, it seems like he doesn't n- not know, but it doesn't he doesn't use his reach as well? Cause yeah, cause cause he like six three six six four, right? Yeah, and he get he get hit too much just in my opinion he's a good champion he just at time he just get hit too much all right then top three overall floyd mayweather uh i'm gonna naturally go to boxing because that's 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 my that's my favorite style uh i like canelo uh what's that new i like errol spence too but I, I, see, that's easier for me uh, uh uh bud crawford what's that what's that dude he was uh uh, Stevenson, Sh- Sh- Shakur, Stevenson. Yeah, yep. man. He nice. Yeah, he nice. How he be doing people in their bodies, man? I'd be like, ooh, Javante you, Davis. Yeah, I, I was gonna say, do you think he sh- he should fight Tank? Uh do you think he ready for that? Because Tank Tank got some power, bro. So I be seeing him hit, hit <laughs> and I be like, don't look like eight teams. He hit bad with eight teams, like, and they sounded like that. Okay. Uh, I mean, I wasn't they talking about David Haney, the one that's gonna go against him. I don't know if they confirmed it. Okay, all right. Uh, man, that's a hard one because he's technical and he got pop, and that pop is what throws you off for that split second. That you know, man. Just, w- w- what was that fight where Shakur fought his girlfriend's brother? And his girlfriend's brother didn't like him, so he wanted to knock him out, and he ended up getting beat. <laughs> that was one of the funniest things ever. <laughs> I, would, I, would dis- I would disown her as a family member. She ain't invited to nut nut. Bro, that's crazy, <laughs> man. But yeah. yo, how is Silva not on that list? How is Anderson Silva not not on that list? Uh, okay. Overall? Okay, so Anderson Silva was my idol he would like when he lost his first time my girl she thought it was she thought it was funny because i was hurt like i was actually hurt like no this can't be like start it over like uh and i guess i got as i got older you know i start seeing I don't know. I just, you know, I got better. Like my IQ got better. I just start seeing little things, and a- after a while, he like I still respect him as a fighter, but he just started to seem like like a uh, Roy Jones, where in a sense, like it's just it's just because your age, and you know, you're just you know, you're just limber and all this stuff. And then when those when that when you don't have that athletic in a sense ability like you used to certain things you used to do don't work as well no as, as as much so it makes me look at it like okay i still like you for the things that you've done but i'm looking at the iq of the fighter now you know like i said john jones who beat him even at uh, uh even uh reyes was close but he still won he still found a way demetrius johnson i gotta go rewatch that fight with uh henry cejudo but Look how look how he do people, you know, just technically sound, you know. Um Floyd, old old man, but his technique is like they they were he worked on so much technique and IQ that when that uh, that ability to uh of, of young age goes away, you know, they still have a very stable foundation. And then it seemed like he wasn't taking it serious no more. And that was like irritating me, you know, that he was just doing it to have fun. But it's like this person is trying to hurt you, bro. Like, like, you know, have fun with the win. 
<laughs> like have fun with that. Have like that's fun when you're winning. That's fun. Not when you're getting beat up. That's I just st- I can go to go to practice and spar if I want that. You know, I'm not in here to have fun. You know, it's fun when you win, in my opinion. Yo, what was the worst injury you've had so far? And I want to tell that question with do you feel like you in your prime right now? Uh I, I ruptured my Achilles in 2019, I believe. That was horrible. I, I ruptured it in uh, practice. Like uh, like I said, you know something ain't right. You just don't know what it is. That's how I felt when my, uh, uh, I'm going to say kidney. When my Achilles ruptured, it was, um. it felt like, it felt like I was in a running position. Like when your foot is kind of like, uh, I don't know if this is a good representation, but it's like you try to push off your foot and it felt like somebody just stomped on my ankle and it's just, that's all I felt was a, like a, a pop and then my leg just go limp. That was horrible. That, and that, that was in a fight? No, 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 no. That was, that was at practice. Oh, okay. When you was training? Yep. When I was sparring. Oh sparring. man. Damn. Yeah, exactly. That's, exactly. that's like one of the most common injuries. Achilles. Yeah. And that's never been a fear of mine, but everybody's been telling me that that, that's been such a big fear of theirs. And I'm like, really? It never really crossed my mind for my Achilles, man. I had to go. I had to, I had to, uh, I had to get surgery. And when they put that mask over your face, bro, I try to, uh, I try to, I try to stay awake. I ain't gonna lie. Uh, He didn't even have the mask was small. So it wasn't like on my whole face. He just kind of just threw it on me. He was like, just breathe this in. I'm like, all right, cool. So I'm like, I'm about to try to stay awake. And only the last thing I remember was looking at the ceiling and my face just doing like a weird crunch feeling. And I just remember waking up, like <laughs> just looking around, like what, what happened? Feeling around, notice my underwear ain't like on me, throwing up. And I'm like, it was that quick. Like it felt like a good sleep, but you just drowsy. So you can't fight the gas. I'll let you know that now. <laughs> you silly bro and uh so yeah my last one was do you feel like you you in your prime right now no nah, nope not nope. yet or past oh not yet not, not yet, yet. There's, okay there's so many different things to like learn it's such a, in a good way you know uh people see fighting as you know in my opinion people see fighting as like a not a barbaric thing but a barbaric you know because they don't know the techniques that truly come through to this like they you could say boxing is a science but mma is like barbaric how so you know because you're, you you can use anything and everything in a certain extent to a certain extent like there's a science to it as well you just gotta know how to set things up everybody's different you know one day i'm going against a boxer next day i'm going against a wrestler another day i'm going against a kickboxer Next day, I'm going to get some Muay Thai fighter. You play with they the same, but now they different because this Muay Thai fighter, he likes throwing elbows. You get what I'm saying? Where the kickboxer just like throwing leg kicks and kind of like boxing with the, with the, he's better at kicking, but he's good with boxing. And the uh, Muay Thai guy is better at clinching. So you just got to tweak your style to that person, you know? So it's, it's a science to it. You just got to know how to set it up. So, before we get out of here, I got one last question, man. Knowing what you know now and everything that you've been through, what advice would you give upcoming fighters that are trying to get into UFC and then trying to start that career? Um, the never give up. You know, I know it's cliche, but that's that's real. That's real stuff. Uh, recovery, 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 and rest. I still have my ups and downs with that, but if that's one thing that I could also change is learning that recovery is just as important as training. Um, get your finances together. Learn about financial finances because you ain't gonna make a lot of money in this until you get to a certain level. And uh, it's just no, it's 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 a grind daily. Never stop learning. Never stop learning. You gotta, you gotta give, you gotta sharpen your blade in every style. And you've been so LeBron got the kid from Akron. You a kid mm. from Cleveland, right? Yeah. But 
you ain't when you go out there you're not representing just yourself you're representing your whole community right? yep what's your message from the black, why you on the black culture podcast to the black community about following your dreams about never giving up about going through it and not just as a fighter but you want to be successful at anything in life being a black man um being being somebody who you know at first it didn't look like it but you kept at it you followed the journey and now you are like just you you, you ain't even where you really want to be at Mm-hmm. but you in the door so what would be your advice to the people um to read it sounds so simple but that's when i became the most rich is when i when uh not financially but mentally read you know read about what you want you know um study you know I, i'm like i said cleveland ohio i'm from st Clair. And now I'm uh, t- t- I'm taking trips to uh, Aust- uh, Melbourne, Australia. You know, uh, read. You know, for real, like read whatever whatever it is. You know, is is in a book. If you can't read, get Audible. You know, whatever it is that you want to do, uh, because we have we fighting a lot of fears and a lot of doubts, and that comes from ignorance. And understand what the word ignorance mean. You know, not knowing. So when you study and which when you study, you gain knowledge, when you gain knowledge, you get confidence. And then those doubts and fears, they just, fall, well, just they fall off, they fall off. So whatever career you want to get into, study it, you know, um, even even if it's not a career thing, you know, you want to, you know, better yourself as a person, your mentality, your spirit, your, your being, get a book, man. Love it. Love it. We are here to hear first the young legend, King Cage. Yes, sir. Black Culture Podcast, bro. We truly appreciate you being able to take the time out. Definitely keep us. Well, you know, you and I going to talk anyway. So, yeah, most of them. You know what I'm saying? So, and then, hell, that next fight, I want to be there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for checking out this episode of the Black Culture Podcast. If you haven't already, be sure to smash that like button and also subscribe to our channel on YouTube, Apple, Google, and Spotify. And also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at the Black Culture Podcast. Peace. Peace.